Hi guys, it's Adam and welcome to another video. So in today's video, I'm going to give five tips out of what I've learned over the course of my reselling journey so far. Now, of course, this video is going to be slightly more tailored towards the beginner. However, you know, more experienced resellers, maybe you've been doing this three years, four years, five years, ten years, whatever, you may still get something out of this video. So it might just be worth watching or even if you just want it, want to watch it for entertainment purposes, that's fine by me. So basically I get a lot of queries, a lot of questions and even I've had a few phone calls off people um, basically just asking me for advice or just um, maybe the, uh, a beginner in the, in the reselling game and they just want a little helping hand or whatever. And I love answering questions and things like that. It can get a little bit repetitive if you're being asked the same question over and over again. But I do try my very best to answer the question, whatever it may be, even if it's a very basic question, um, because I want to help those people out. And uh, yeah, I don't mind, you know, if you want to contact me on my Facebook page or over on my Instagram or wherever, there should be some social media links down below. Uh, you know, you want to ask for help or even maybe you want to give me some help in, in some area, that's completely fine. Um, and yeah, you know, I just love chatting about reselling with like-minded people. So um, if you'd like to do that, then that's perfectly fine by me. But we'll get on with today's video. So the first tip that I learned the hard way was take as little money out of the business as you can. Primarily in the first year, Maybe it could be extended out to the second year as well, but certainly within that first six to 12 months, you know, that sort of first year, you've, you've got to take as little money out of the business as you can because you want to be reinvesting it back in. And it, as I say, it's something I learned the hard way because I was buying a lot of Lego to, re, uh, not to resell, sorry, I was buying a lot of Lego for myself to build, just to the, the fun of building Lego. And um, I actually transitioned in, instead of, buying Lego for my personal use, what I transitioned into doing was buying Lego to resell. So it was still sort of um, giving me that appetite for Lego. I was still satisfying that hunger and I was still able to build Lego and things like that. But I was actually doing it for monetary gain, you know, reselling it. And uh, instead of just taking it out, taking money out of the business to spend on Lego for myself. So that's the way I tr transitioned out of spending um, a bit of money on Lego. And I think one month I spent about £400, £500 and believe me, those of you who are Lego collectors or anything like that, you will know how easy it is to spend that amount on Lego and that's what I was doing. I mean, I'm in a great position now where I don't have many bills because I live at home with my parents and back when I started the business I was in the same position and really I shouldn't have been buying that Lego, I should have been reinvesting because I don't have bills so I don't have many bills so I can afford to put a lot of money back into the business and it's something as I say I did learn the hard way through actually spending a lot of money and seeing that a lot of money was coming out of the business for my own wages and thinking to myself right I need to actually um, you know direct my business in a different way and sort of just sort of um, you know, get out of taking that money out of the business for myself personally. So yeah, that's one big, big tip. Always take out as little money as you can. If you're in a different position for, to me, let's say you have a family, you have bills, of course, take money out for your family. Don't starve or anything like that, but take as little money out as you possibly can. So number two is hoover up all the free information you can. Now, I don't specifically have a um, a real problem with people who advertise paid courses. I think that people do pay, who do pay, paid courses, a lot of them are giving good value for the money you pay. However, I do feel that there is a good amount of free information that will really help you out there. Personally, myself, I can't see a future where I'll be selling anyone a course. I just don't feel like I'm that kind of person. Will I promote different sites or will I um, promote different products and things like that. I might do in the future, I don't know, um, but I don't think specifically I would create an actual course to resell. I don't know why that is. I just feel like I, I, I like giving out the information uh, to you guys free and obviously I get a little tiny portion of money from the adverts playing on this YouTube channel and things like that, so I'm quite happy sticking to that. But as I say, I don't have a direct... Um, you know, problem with anyone selling courses and I do feel like a lot of people who do sell courses give 
valuable information for the money you pay. Um, but as I say, just hoover up all the free information you can. You know, I'm talking all the resellers on YouTube, hoover up all the knowledge, you know, get to know what they're selling, get to know what um, what you know what's selling on eBay for what prices go down to the car boot and then you know maybe take 10 pound 20 pound with your first off or maybe you're a little bit more experienced and you want to take 200 quid or something start to buy up some of those items and also branch out and that'll lead on to another uh, to my next point actually which is diversify into as many niches as you can as quickly as you can so what I'm talking about is when you have done hoovering up all that free information, go to the car boot, go to the chat shops, wherever it is, go to auctions and try and diversify into things that you've not seen on YouTube. But you think, actually, I think there might be some money in that. And I'll guarantee it right now you will make mistakes, you will make fails. But to be honest, as long as you can get your money out of them, it's not so bad and you will learn from that and you'll think well that item doesn't do so well but while I was researching that item I found this item that does really well and I know where I can source this item for quite cheap so and then you'll realize that there's a margin in that item and then it'll branch off into something else and then you'll find another niche that's really cool or whatever so really profitable so yeah diversify that's one thing that I didn't do as quickly as I would have liked but I am pretty good at diversification now uh, so diversify into as many niches as you can as quickly as you can. I did stick to like board games and books and things like that for quite a while, probably about six months really until I broke out of that comfort zone. Um, number four is figure out the most, this is a really important one actually, figure out the most efficient ways to do your packaging, posting, sourcing, labelling, whatever else. Um, and step up your set up your processes early. So what I mean by that is, you know, my accounting processes, my postage processes. You know, using Royal Mail Click and Drop. I didn't like start off using Mail Royal Mail Click and Drop. In fact, I only started using it about six, eight, maybe twelve months ago maximum. Um, so basically, you kind of it is a kind of one that you learn step by step and throughout your journey. But if you can actually find the most efficient processes at the start of your journey and try and implement them at the start, then it will give you so much less hassle. I couldn't find a good accounting system that worked for me for quite a while and I was thinking, how do I do this? How do I do, uh, how can I account for all these things in my business? What sort of accounts can I use? Um, I had to go onto HMRC website or .gov website or whatever it's called and look at what I need to, you know, what I need to be claiming, all my expenses and things like that, and really looking into taxation and all that sort of stuff. But then I found, finally found after months and months and months, an accounting system that worked for me and is much more of a, um, a time efficient, you know, it's much more time efficient each month now, uh, my accounting system that I currently use compared to when I was, when I was starting. But if you can find that system as soon as you start, then it will save you all that time and effort of of going through and thinking, right, does this system work, does this system work? Try and find a good one first off, because the accounting system I use is very, very simple, and it was staring me in the face, really, but I couldn't see it until I did m further research into it. Um, and, you know, it, it did take a lot of time and effort, and some things just do take time and effort, but if you can find an accounting system that works for you, or, you know, a postage system, or a sourcing system that works for you, you know, pretty quickly, then that'll help you in the long run. Uh, and then number five is, this is another big one, make an effort to communicate with people and build up a contact list to increase the speed of sourcing. So, you know, when you're at the car boot, when you're at the charity shops, just, you know, take the courage and just talk to people. You might be thinking, well, that's easy, I'm a very social person. Well, that's fine if you're a very social person and all that sort of stuff. But there are a lot of resellers who maybe are a bit shy or aren't much of a social person. But do please take that courage and talk to people because you don't know where it'll lead. I've had some really, really good pickups from just talking to people. And I've had repeat pickups of people from talking to people. I've got to know charity shop managers and things like that. It's been really, really helpful. Um, 
you know communicating with people so really do that and as i say that should increase the speed of your sourcing because if you're talking to enough people people will then realize who you are and what you do and they'll think oh well i know someone who wants to clear their loft or whatever out of loads of toys and games or something like that so i know that adam does does reselling and if you just even just talking to your family and friends or whoever it is you will get pickups from it. Honestly, you will. You will get leads or whatever you want to call them. You will get them, trust me. Might take a little bit of time, but you will get them. So, yeah, the fifth and final one is just communicate with people, network with people, talk to people. And it's as simple as just saying hi, it really is. So, I'm going to leave it there. We've just gone over 10 minutes. So, I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. I hope you got something from it. If you did, please do give it a like. And I will be back with another video very soon. I've got some more Lego to come actually. And then I'm going to do a Lego investment haul. And then also I'm going to try and do a reselling haul as well if I can. Um, I'm going to the auction on tu Monday, Tuesday. So um, viewing's on Monday, the auction's on Tuesday. So hopefully I should have a reselling haul for you as well. So that would be pretty cool. And after that, no doubt, it'll be a sales update or something. So, yeah, quite happy with the progress of the channel and the videos I'm making. I just need to keep it up because, I honestly, I don't do enough videos these days. I need to definitely make a conscious effort to do some more videos for you guys because I know that a lot of people are hungry for content these, these days. I know I am. I'm always wanting to watch YouTube videos. So, with that being said, I'll leave it there, guys. Thank you for watching.